First of all, I want to tell you that there is at least one thing where FSR 3 is already better than the LSS 3. And I'm not talking about being free or working on all GPUs, which is already great. One thing, for example, is the user interface. Since Nvidia interpolates the whole frame, including the user interface, or at least, at least that's how it worked with the early implementations, some DLSS titles suffer from movement artifacts around the game's interface, while AMD's FSR 3 has kind of a workaround for that. I mean, if you don't trust me on this one, even well-known people in the industry, for example the Eurogamer webpage, which you may know from the YouTube channel Digital Foundry, they usually have the tendency of pending more to the NVIDIA side, so the FSR 3 demos with Forspoken, Immortals of Avium, and even running in The Last of Us using the HyperRx feature with the frame, the frame interpolation or the frame generation technology that makes the frame generation work with the RX 7000 series in all the X11 and the X12 titles and even they said it was good in terms of picture quality when comparing to the LSS 3. So that means that things are actually looking good. On top of that we have many more things that weren't presented at the AMD's event but are available now and well explained in the GPU Open webpage or even on AMD's webpage. And man, they look good. I mean, I guess that's better than that, just today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. And if you don't play that much, well, you can just use the hourly system for as little as 0.35 Canadian dollars. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. Okay, so firstly, let's just understand how FSR 3 frame generation works. As you can see, without the upscaling, we have the main render workload, then the post effects, UI, and then we have the frame done. With FSR2 upscaling, you have the main render, and before the post effects and UI, you have the upscaling, that then creates the frame. With FSR3 frame generation, you have the main render workload, the FSR3 upscaling, then we have the post effects, UI, and you have the generated frame where the previous real frame should be, while the same real frame comes in between the creation of the next one. This means that the generated frame that FSR 3 makes will replace the real frame produced and that same real frame will only appear in the middle of the next frame's production, which is actually interesting. As for other things that weren't presented at AMD's Gamescom event, well, and posted on the GPU Open webpage, FSR 3 will also bring AMD's own version of the LAA, called NAA, Native Anti-Aliasing, that will use FSR algorithm as anti-aliasing instead of the traditional TAA, improving the visual fidelity in games where TAA isn't performing that well. And this is one of the biggest surprises for me because, for example, if you take in consideration NVIDIA's DLAA, well, in some games that have poor TAA implementation, it actually works much better, much better than using TAA, for example, in not in Cyberpunk because it doesn't have DLAA, but in some games where the, um, where the TAA is actually way too blurry and doesn't re retain too much info, well, the LAA will work much better. I believe that Red Dead Redemption was one of those games, but I tested, for example, in No Man's Sky, and the LAA was actually quite better than the native TAA. So, if um, AMD actually manages to pull this out, uh, making the NAA actually better than poor implementations of TAA, it will be quite good. And if we can use it in most games, it will be even better. And of course even more because the LAA can only be used on NVIDIA GPUs and I believe the only, only with the RTX ones, while NAA will be available to use in a full spectrum of GPUs, so that's also a big plus. FSR 3 also has several user interface modes that allow an artifact-free interface, being the recommended method via engine callback, that according to AMD allows a true display frame rate interface on top of the generated frames. This means that you can have the game's user interface running at the real FPS you'd have without the frame generation, while only the game render would run with it. 
And while this might seem dumb, this is actually very well thought because one of the Achilles heels of um, the Nvidia's DLSS 3 frame generation, at least in the beginning, was exactly that, the user interface. While the game render was actually performing decently well, the user interface had, uh, well, lots of movement artifacts, in this case ghosting and so on, because the interpolation was also working with the user interface, something that with FSR 3 won't really happen. Well, as long as uh, as the developers actually implement the engine drawback style or engine callback style. That's it. They actually claim that due to their highly optimized optical flow technology, they can actually create a new 4K frame in less time than some upscaling technologies, maybe shooting at Nvidia here, I don't really know. And of course, these workloads run in asynchronous compute to not impact the main game render pipeline. And as for the GPUs that can use this technology, well, I even made a video yesterday about it, and sadly, AMD's marketing was a bit misleading in this situation. But still, nothing to really be worried about. Just like I said, a bit misleading. FSR 3 upscaling technology will be available for anyone with an RX 590, GTX 1000 series or superior. The FSR 3 frame generation can be used without any kind of upscaling, but unlike the previous will only be available for anyone with an RX 5700, RTX 2000 series or superior. Meaning that older lower tier cards like the RX 5500XT and 5600XT will only be able to use the upscaling, but lower tier cards from the newer generations will also be able to make use of the frame generation which is still much better than on Nvidia's side, since they actually locked the frame generation only for their newest RTX 4000 series GPUs. Bummer. As for the anti-lag plus and frame generation on demand for all the X11 and the X12 titles, those will be only usable with an RX 7000 series card via the Adrenaline software, something that AMD already shown in the event running, for example, with Lies of P, and as stated by Eurogamer slash Digital Foundry, The Last of Us Part 1. And as I told you before, Eurogamer slash Digital Foundry saw the tech demos in person and they all agreed that impressively in both demos, the UI elements were handled very well, while some DLSS 3 titles, especially the early ones, interpolated once again the UI elements as well, producing shimmer in motion, something that did not happen in the FSR 3 demos that they tested, or in this case that they watched, of course. And they even added on their website saying, the slide only hints towards how game changing the fluid motion frames might become, but our eyes on impression were mighty convincing. Also stating for the Forspoken demo that the game was running locked at 120 frames per second and looked just as a V-Synced 120 FPS should look. The game was running in FSR 2 quality mode, providing its own frame rate boost, with the frame gen taking you up to the limit. In terms of fluidity and clarity, FSR 3 looked a match for the LSS 3, a view shared by Alex, Rich and John, who were all present to see the demos in person. A great start for FSR 3. Sadly, I wasn't able to test FSR 3 because it is only coming in the, in the next couple of weeks, uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't at uh, Gamescom, of course, at least for this year, maybe next year I will go. Um, but if what Eurogamer slash Digital Foundry say, if that's, that comes to be true, this actually puts FSR 3 in the spotlight, even more because FSR 3 frame generation can be used by all GPU brands and older GPU series. And with this all said, let's wait for the first game integrations, which are Forspoken and Immortals of a VM, to see what this stack can actually do. As for the other titles, AMD already has listed the next to come FSR 3 titles, including Cyberpunk 2077, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Warhammer Space Marine 2, in between many others. Now, as you're seeing, FSR 3 actually looks very promising, and we do have more things than, than what AMD showed us at AMD's Gamescom event, Gamescom event. but I mean, uh, they also were kind of misleading as, as of what GPUs could actually use um, FSR 3 or FSR 3 Fluid Motion uh, and they actually thought that, they said that FSR 3 could be used with older GPUs, even older than the 5000 5, series and at least at launch the Fluid Motion will be only for the 5700 and above. 
meaning that, well, you can't actually use uh, for lower generations than that. You can use the FSR3 upscaling, but you cannot use the frame generation in those cards, sadly. Maybe with some other drivers and some other things, you, you might actually be able to use fluid motion on the, um, the, the lower tier cards like the 5500 XT, a 5600 XT, but at least so far officially you can't, which is a bummer, they were kind of misleading, but, but still way better than Nvidia's proprietary uh, DLSS frame generation technology that even inside their brand can only be used with a new, with the newest, sorry, RTX 4000 series, damn it's, it's morning, morning here, here. and I'm gonna right record. <laughs> Guys, I just wanted to, to give you this information for the video because there are lots of info online and we don't really know where to trust and this is the official info that you can see with the links in the description for GPU Open and AMD's own website. So it's the, the information that you can trust because it is on AMD's website, okay? Thank you very much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and leave your comment in the comment section Tell me, telling me what you actually think about this, if it is great, if it isn't. Uh, what do you think about NAA, native anti-aliasing, which is one of the things that I was expecting the most. Um, frame generation inside the adrenaline software and everything. Just let me know what you think in the comment section because, once again, I really want to know. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.